When Hamas attacked Israel on the 7th of October, killing 1,170 people and kidnapping around 240, including about 30 children, we could understand their rage. What parent wouldn't go into fight mode if their kids were threatened and hurt? Like Liam Neeson in the fiction film Taken, his words, if they didn't return his daughter, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you, well, it resonated. Though we cheered for Liam's character, we soon looked on in horror as the terrorised became the terrorist and we saw the impact of the Israelis' non-compromising decision to wipe out Hamas for their evil deed and to rescue their hostages at all costs on the ordinary people of Palestine. As each night the destruction, violence and suffering in Gaza was beamed into our living rooms, the horror of what was happening caused us to gasp in disgust. As of the 23rd of November, more than 15,000 Palestinians, including over 6,000 children, have been killed, making this one of the deadliest wars for children this century. In my country, Australia, people started to protest on behalf of the Palestinians, claiming that the inhumane treatment of the people of Gaza, that it made it little more than an open-air prison, and the Israelis' poor past policies in relation to Hamas, had caused the problem in the first place. We were introduced to the idea that one person's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Finally, there was some reprieve. A truce was bartered, and we started to see hostages and prisoners on both sides being released. But it was short-lived, lasting only seven days. And as I film this, the fighting has begun again in earnest. So what can I do? An Australian Christian, half a world away. Well... I can put my money where my mouth is and give money to the aid organisations that are trying to help those adversely impacted by the war. See the link below. I can try and give comfort to those in Australia from both sides of the conflict who are from or have family in those areas. I can make a stand against any anti-Semitism or Islamophobia expressed in this country. I can support my country in its request to both sides for restraint and in offering asylum for Palestinian refugees. I can pray for my fellow followers of Jesus on both sides, an often forgotten small minority, Christians caught up between the warring fractions. I can hold my tongue and not make any rash judgments as to where blame should be laid. My focus needs to be more on trying to be part of God's kingdom rather than taking sides in regard to disputes between earthly kingdoms. Having said that though, I intend to keep myself informed so that I can encourage my Australian government to do what it can do to work towards peace. The future seems daunting. What solution can be found for two groups that have the total annihilation of the other as their aim? In that vein, I'd be interested in what your views are as to the way forward. What do you think the answer is? Tell me in the comments below. I fear there is no answer until Jesus comes, again, to judge the living and dead and establish his kingdom, displacing the warring kingdoms of this world that are consumed by defending their self-interests and are locked in a cycle of retribution and violence. I look forward to hearing from you. Feel free to like and subscribe. God bless.